Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's warm. I didn't have to make a fire this morning, but it's going to get cold. <laughs> Forecast says it's going to get cold. How would I know? I don't ever look at that because I have someone in the house who cares <laughs> and then lets me know, it didn't you want, by the way, <laughs> which is really nice. My coffee's steaming. Isn't that nice? I went out yesterday. Nope, sorry. Yesterday was the Sabbath day. So I said, I'm going to do that. Okay, we call it Lazy Sunday. I guess kind of the same thing, right? And uh, I literally didn't do anything except for I had to go to the barn. And I thought, now how would I circumvent going to the barn and absolutely doing nothing, no work or anything? And I had to say, well... I could just leave the dog food bin open and let the dogs just eat how much ever they want to. Yeah, or, yeah, just, what, feed the bowl, put the bowl, but then I still would have to put the bowls down. Okay, all right, all right. And uh, what about how oh, Saturday night I could just throw enough hay in there and feed for the horses or I could just let them out, leave them out and not worry about it and, okay, Horses, you can't, I mean, they, they'll they eat and they'll eat and they'll eat. And as I said, we have some problem babies over there that were abused when they were younger. And so now they have some issues. So you have to be careful how much you feed them. They can't just have, right? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Ah, but that, at that time, in the Old Testament, I guess that wasn't a problem because, what, people didn't abuse their animals? Okay. <laughs> They didn't have problems like that at that time. They didn't. I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, but on Saturday I went out and I prepped one of my beds for garlic. So I tried this one video that showed that you can uh, uh, sprout your garlic first inside. And I tried. I didn't have exactly the bottles that the guy reused. Okay. Different country. Okay. Different kind of bottle so I tried a different way and or with a different with a cup and it didn't quite work the way it worked for him maybe also he's using a different type of garlic than what I had so some of it sprouted but it took way too long and in his case I think it was seven days and I'm after two weeks I'm gonna, I think I need to just plant that garlic be done with it you know so I did, and one can, if uh, if you have temperate, we have temperate conditions here right now, it's not frozen ground, so usually I plant my garlic in November, but uh, I didn't get to it, and so I thought, well, you know what, I'll try it right now, and you can, you can go if you have a bed that, as I said, the soil's kind of prepped, this, which I prepped mine, and uh, and I just put it in and done, right? Yes, okay, my garlic's planted. Woohoo, quite a bit of it too. I love garlic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic, okay? Yes, so eating garlic is good for you. Anyway, and it's worth it to go and read up on it on how you actually get at the benefits of garlic. Supposedly, cutting them in a certain way makes a difference. Oh, didn't know that. All right, let's get going here. I'm not talking about the news. Okay, as I said, I don't even, I'm kind of, ugh, just not, can't, I don't understand how people think out there and think that that's the right way to go, but there you go. It's what people do. We have so much freedom in this country. All right. We're in Exodus 36. Bezalel, Oholiab, and all the men whom Yahweh has endowed with the skill and knowledge to know how to carry out all the work to be done in the sanctuary will do exactly as Yahweh has ordered. Oh, yep. A halt is called to the collection. Moses then summoned Bezalel, Oholiab, and all the skilled men whose hearts Yahweh had endowed with skill, all whose heart stirs them to come forward and do the work. 
From Moses, they received everything that the Israelites had brought as contributions for carrying out the work of building the sanctuary. And as they went on bringing their offerings every morning, the skilled men who were doing all the work for the sanctuary all left their particular work and said to Moses, The people are bringing more than is needed for the work Yahweh has ordered to be done. Moses then gave the order and proclamation was made throughout the camp. No one, whether man or woman, must must do anything more towards contributing for the sanctuary. So the people were prevented from bringing any more, for the material to hand was enough and more than enough to complete all the work. Wow. Obviously, God chose the right people to do this because they went and said, we got enough. We don't need any more. They could have just, eh? yes, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Take the leftovers for themselves? Yes, they could have, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Use what you need, not what you want. That's interesting. And good to see that in here again. I feel like there is a saying that uh, many are called, but few follow the call. And it's one of those things where, you know, regardless of what goes on in our lives, right? There is always, the right way is always there right? for us to choose from. Also, we all, always have the right people around us if we acknowledge them, right? They might not be as pretty or handsome. He didn't say they might not be as uh, rich or poor. They might not be as, okay. Yet, uh, their heart to mind is in the right place. Sadly, uh, we're so geared towards now on just what lays on the surface uh, in everything. It doesn't matter just in everything that we don't we, we don't look any deeper we don't we don't find the root for example for a problem we'd rather just deal with the what's on the top never knowing what's going on underneath right yes yeah for example right? we don't look for the goodness in a person through their loyalty their virtues right? yes their constancy towards many good things, or all good things. There's one thing definitely we don't like, and that's the truth. We don't want the truth. The truth gets in the way. And yet, would be the solution to many problems. What's the truth? Well, what did I just mention beforehand? If you dig a little deeper into a story, suddenly you're going, ah, I think I've been hoodwinked here. Uh, I think they're only telling me half of the story. For what purpose? What's the purpose for that? Yeah. So you can jump on someone's bandwagon. So you can become a part of someone's agenda. You might not want to be a part of. Done. Right? These craftsmen, they're very honest. We got plenty. Okay, from what we can see, we need this, 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 this. We're good now. And the people were so giving. Huh? That's a good thing to see. Somehow I see a change here from, uh, yes, that's good, from uh, being obstinate people to becoming what? More agreeable. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> the dwelling. All the most skilled of the men doing the work made the dwelling. We built our own house, by the way. First, we started with the barn because we built the log. We wanted to build a log house. Well, we did. And uh, so we started with a log barn first. Yes. And uh, we got them in kits. So, you know, all the wood was already cut and numbered and we just had to put it together. We just had to put it together. Ah, oh, it's a lot of work, guys. <laughs> and we had a lot of help. 
a script, but we did it all ourselves. We literally did. We didn't have, and thank God for my brother-in-law, who's, who's a great carpenter, my husband, who's a great electrician and plumber and carpenter too. This, I mean, those two did it with the help of many others, but they did it. They built the barn first and got a little a bit of an idea and then the house. And this house is really big, so it has two stories, right? And we got to the second part, the second story. And there was like this, uh, it became like this just, you know, you first you put glue down, uh -huh, and then it's like glue drying, which means get the locks, they got to get on. And then you had, oh, you have put, put some insulation in between in the grooves. And then the next lock goes on. And then you had to, the screws were this long. I'm not kidding, you guys. Anyway, so we did that and we got up about uh, maybe three feet or something. And they, they did, they, they kept making sure that it stays squared because that was one of the things. They both went to a, like a, a, a few days, uh, 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 seminar learning seminar on how to put up a house like this and uh from the company that we got the kits for the, the log kits and so suddenly they realized that the house was doing this rather than being straight it it was pulled out of right yes yeah pulled out of the rectangle and so they had okay well so what do we do so they pulled cables and and uh, and straightened it out that way over over I don't know a week or two and straightened it out and then we could continue on. Good thing they noticed that. Yes, yeah. You can really mess up building a house. <laughs> well, we didn't, and <clears throat> it's it's an amazing house. It's difficult to keep it clean. We decided to go with round locks on the inside as well. And, uh, and so the dust, and we have wood heat, so the dust just settles on the top of the upper part of the round log. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. So you have to do this like twice a year. You have to go around and either just broom it down. You said, oh, why don't you use a vacuum? Vacuum doesn't work so well, you guys. So you got to go and just have the windows and the doors open and just, you know, sweep it down. It's not, it is kind of when you live like this, and I've seen people, other people's log, log homes, okay, and they look like, whoa, we're just not like that. We put it up, we left many things in the raw form, kind of, and we live a little bit like when people used to just build their own log homes, okay? Yeah, yeah well, they had to go out and cut the trees as well, this, that, even more work than what we did. And we built our home on a rock. We realized we were also building a basement where we found the underground spring, which is still down there. Hand has uh, carried us many times over dry times. Yes. And, uh, and uh, the guy that dug out the bed, he says, I can't go any further, guys. There's a rock. You are building your whole home on a huge rock. I mean... A huge rock. <laughs> oh, well, if that isn't biblical in a way, too, right? Yes. Okay. Everything kind of worked out that way. Because one thing we did is we came and he said, we're building this for God. This will be a place for God. Right? Yes. Not ours. God's. And hopefully, as keepers here on earth, as masters here on earth, right? Yeah, over the principles of creation. Uh, hopefully, they'll, this will, uh, someone will take it over and have the same mindset that we had, uh, have now, still, when we started to build this all, right? Yes? Yeah. Well, anyway, you know, it's what it is, right? Yes? Maybe, maybe it'll sustain itself and someone will. Uh, so far, mm -mm. <laughs> but and uh, 
so many things just came together right, in the right way, you know, during the whole building process and everything. This is a pretty tall, big building. Uh, and, yep, whatever, no one got hurt. Not one person got hurt. That's pretty amazing, don't you think? I thought so. Okay. Well, anyway, God was really with us when we built all this. Oh, which, the dwelling. Okay, just... I don't know, it just reminded me of that, so I have to tell you that. Moses made it with ten sheets of finely woven linens. Linen, dyed violet, purple, red, purple, and crimson, and embroidered with great winged creatures. The length of a single sheet was 28 cubits, its width four cubits, all the sheet sheets being of the same size. He joined five of the sheets to one another and the other five sheets to one another. He made violet loops along the edge of the first sheet at the end of the set and did the same along the edge of the last sheet in the other set. He made 50 loops on the first sheet and 50 loops along the outer edge of the sheet of the second set. Oh, he set up the, the dwellings. He set up the uh, outskirts, it sounds like, where then they would be working at. The loops corresponding to one another. He made 50 gold clasps and joined the sheets together with the clasps. In this way, the dwelling was a unified whole. Next, he made sheets of goat's hair for the tent over the dwelling. He made 11 of these. The length of a single sheet was 30 cubits and its width 4 cubits. The 11 sheets were all of the same size. That's one thing I've never done in my life, and that is spin yarn. Spin wool. Spin goat's hair. <laughs> I had goats. I had a lot of goats. Many different types of goats. And I'm still wondering what kind of goats they had that that worked for. It must be the undercoats. When they get the undercoats, you brush out the undercoats. It, does, it sounds like they didn't cut the hair. They brushed, them, they brushed the hair out. Hmm. Interesting. That has me fascinated. The goat hair sheets. Ah. He joined five sheets together into one set and six sheets into another. He made 50 loops along the edge of the last sheet of the first set and 50 loops along the edge of the sheet of the second set. He made 50 bronze clasps to draw the tent together and make it a unified whole. And for the tent, he made a cover of ram skin dyed red and a cover of fine leather over that. So people often make this distinction between goats and sheep, right? Yes. One's positive. The other's negative. Okay. When it comes to what? All right. All right, all right. Uh, here, they're both equally important in what? Aha! Where do people come up with all this superstitious stuff? Uh, and decide to use an animal for either negative stuff, negativity, uh, evil, or positive, oh, good, okay. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know? You hear seldom that, and I'm sure it does happen, but you hear seldom that in a goat herd, um, there, there were uh, coyotes and wolves and this and that and took them down, right? Yes. Yeah. I never lost. Okay. I may have lost one that was already not doing that. She had a stroke and she got, went missing. She just went missing. She was quite old. She's about 14 years old and, um, still had babies. I couldn't, I, I was like, how do I keep them separate? I don't think she can't go through it. She did. But she had a stroke, I'm not sure why, uh, uh, a few years before she got missing. And did just fine still. And she was a great goat. We had her since she was about, gosh, how old was she? About six months old. We had her mama first, then we got her as well. And uh, amazing goat. She was just this just absolutely amazing goat. And took good care of her babies and had lots of babies. And uh, she went missing. I never found, and it was in the snow. I've never even found. She was also white. So you think, well, maybe you missed her. I don't think so. 
never found a blood trail, never found, I have no idea what happened to that goat. We never found bones. And I've walked these hills here and these mountains almost every day when I could. And I've never found anything of her. No idea what happened to her. It's like she was here, then she just kind of disappeared <laughs> after 14 years. Well, anyway, get back to, so... They're very good at defending their territory, and especially when you have a big billy goat, like we did. Right? No, we didn't dehorn ours. Right? Again, where do we live? They need their horns, right? Yes, you can declaw a cat if it's just in the house and not around other cats. But if you have a cat that goes outside, why would you declaw it? That's cruel. How is the cat going to defend itself? Or do what it naturally does, which is hunt for what, right? Yes. Well, anyway... Sheep, on the other hand, right, seem to be much more vulnerable, right, because of their temperament. Now, one's better than the other. Okay, well, according to here, God gave the instructions for both. Okay, I want, I want sheepskin, ramskin, and then I want goat hair, sheets as well. You see? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, I like this. Anywho. <laughs> the framework. For the dwelling, he made vertical frames of acacia wood. See, even though this is just about, okay, building something now, we're rereading certain things that we, okay, already read, though, or we already know that. But there are different things that come to mind about what's God's point of view, right? Yes? And how have we kind of twist it, right? that view, so that it fits what? Our superstitions, our ways of wanting to do things, especially when it comes to money, power, and greed. Yes? Yeah? No? So when one reads this, things come to mind. Right? Yes, just like I've, what have we been doing. I've been talking more about what suddenly inspired me to talk about while I'm reading this rather than the actual reading. Yes? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Just depends on how one wants to look at things and how what one would like to, how one learns as well. For, okay, the framework. For the dwelling, he made vertical frames of acacia wood. Each frame was 10 cubits long and one and a half cubits wide. Each frame had twin tenons. This was how he made all the frames for the dwelling. He made frames for the dwelling, 20 frames for the south side to the south, and made 40 silver sockets under the 20 frames. Two sockets under one frame for its two tenons, two sockets under the next frame for its two tenons. And for the other side of the dwelling, the north side, 20 frames, and 40 silver sockets, two sockets under one frame, two sockets under the next frame. For the back of the dwelling, on the west, he made six frames. He also made two frames for the corners of the back of the dwelling. These were coupled together at the bottom, stayed so up to the top, to the level of the first ring. What a fence. <laughs> this he did with the two frames forming the two corners. Thus, there were eight frames with their 16 silver sockets, two sockets under each frame. He made crossbars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the first side of the dwelling, five crossbars for the frames of the other side of the dwelling, and five crossbars for the frames which formed the back of the dwelling to the west. He made the middle bar to join the frames from one end to the other, Halfway up. You know, I bet acacia wood also is, uh, has to be really straight wood. They didn't have sawmills at the time. He overlaid the frames with gold, made gold rings for them, through which the, to, to place the crossbars and overlaid the crossbars with gold. <coughs> You know, reading this and thinking on, oh, wow, how exact everything had to be, this and that. There's one thing that I've learned as I got older. 
to approach everything. So there was one thing Reverend Moon taught me. Okay. One thing that, yeah, he taught people is that before you start anything, collect, center yourself, say a prayer, right? Yes. Oh, so that then you do the best possible so that you have that calm within yourself to start a project without impatience. Yes. And really get into it and take the time right, to really do good work, to not waste anything due to impatience. Yes. Go too fast. Mess something up. This and that. You know, <laughs> see, there we go. I remember we were here for years and years and years. We still didn't have door jams. We didn't have uh, a railing here for the, the stairs. And also uh, there were still uh, bare walls. And I had it. I'm looking at the wood out there, which been there for years and years and years and years now. Nobody had time, you know, to, to, to kind of do more of the finishing work in the house. So I said, I can do this. You know, I, I'm just going to get to it and I do it. I put walls up by myself and I just used, what I, I used baseboards that, okay, still no baseboards here, but don't need them. Why do I need baseboards, right? That's kind of a waste anyway. And uh, so I said, you know what? I'm just going to use these and it actually look really nice on the, the walls that I put together. Yeah. Are they perfect? No, but they look nice. It was better than what there was. And I worked with whatever knowledge I had. So I remembered I was doing the door jam over here. And I I cut the wood and I put it in it and I tried to nail it in. And I couldn't. The nails just wouldn't go in. And I bent one after. I'm going, what the heck's going on here? And suddenly I realized, okay, okay, you're doing something wrong. And, you're, and something's trying to stop you. Sure enough, so I stepped back. Because again, when I started all this, because of the little knowledge that I had about it all, I said, okay, spirit world, I know there's a lot of carpenters already over there. You guys help me out. Keep me safe, number one, because I worked with saws. <laughs> I'm not a big deal. Not, not, not a big fan of any kind of saws <laughs> except for hand saws. <laughs> <coughs> Please guide me, protect me, and help me out. Now, give me the, give me the epiphanies, the ideas. Oh, this is how I need to do it. Oh, and that's how it's going to work. Oh, that's how you have to cut it, right? Yes. And here I am, you know, and I'm about done. And I was going, oh, I just want to get this done, you know, and, uh, and it wouldn't work. And I, okay. Suddenly I'm going, okay, I need to step back. So I step back. I said, okay, guys, what's, what's the problem? You know, why is this not working? And I said, you have it upside down. I have it upside down. What's that matter? Well, it mattered. It actually mattered. I had it upside down and I look up and I'm going, oh, you're right. It doesn't fit up there, but it would fit down here, right? Yes. So I switched the board around and sure enough, the nails went in just like that. Ah, yes. Okay. I know, right? But that's all the stuff's coming back to uh, somehow coming back to me. And uh, it was so interesting doing all this. I remember that I started the bathroom upstairs, one of the walls in the bathroom, and again, just putting up, and I had some help from someone I thought that kind of would know. Well, somehow we got stopped doing what we were doing, and and uh, uh, and it didn't get go any farther, so that lay dormant for a while, and I'm looking at them going, man, this is so badly done. The cuts aren't straight, and... Uh, and it's like one board was a little longer than the other and it didn't fit properly. And there were little gaps between the boards and the next board. I'm going, what is this so badly done? Why did he do it like this? I pulled the whole thing off again. Okay. Yes. And I started again from scratch and the wall looks beautiful up there. Right. Yes. I could have just left it and be unhappy for the rest of my life <laughs> with this really shoddy work. And uh, decided, no, nope, mm -mm, I'm going to redo this. Right? Yes, I did learn a lesson there where I like working by myself. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so you don't want to, we had a lot of help with this house. Okay. So, nope, it's not that. But I like the work that I do done in a certain way. 
I'm not perfect as a carpenter, but I know what looks good to me. Right? So at least I can execute that. Right? Yes? Yeah. Anywho. <laughs> so we all learn the framework. Well, there you go. <laughs> So interesting to me, what all comes to my mind when I read this part and I think on what we built up here, not just here, but also in California where we redid that whole house, got it basically the house, lived in it while we're cutting, while we got it. And, you know, my thoughts to this house that someone built in 1918, someone had built that house, okay, basically with scrap wood. And uh, made it a beautiful house. It had beautiful features, which some of them, sadly, were just taken out. I wanted to keep them, but I wasn't there <laughs> for uh, uh, about three months. My children and I went to Switzerland so that my husband and, and uh, again, all of our friends just not could work in the house. And... Uh, Someone did that. Someone built that house and someone trashed the house. Let it go completely to ruin. You would not believe what we found in that house and, uh, and how, what the kind of condition that it was in. Yeah? And you just had to wonder what kind of people were living in that house for it to then be in that type of shape. So we built a beautiful, we added on another uh, uh, floor as well. And it's a beautiful house. Uh, my daughter just told me a really interesting story on that just very recently, a couple of days ago, where she went to California to visit our neighbors that we had there and was then uh, went, what, it was invited to go back into the house that we lived in for seven years. And that ha that. You know, how we rebuilt the whole house and this now, oh, no, rebuilt, restored the house. And uh, there is a laundry chute in that house, okay? And the lady, the, the part on the upper floor was still open. And she said, you know, I know this is a laundry, but I don't know where it comes out. We're not sure exactly where the outlet is. And Christina said, my daughter said, I know. So she went downstairs and showed her and just, oh my gosh, you know. And uh, it was like, and she said, Mom, there's still part of the floor up in the third floor where you painted the fish, this, snap, you know, part of it is covered now, but there's still some of the boards. And uh, and the lady was like, oh, yeah, do you know anything about this? Said, That's my mom. My mom painted that floor. And she says, Mom, it was, it, was, it was so fun to see, still to see part of that floor uh, painted with the fish, you know, in the bathroom up in the third floor. Well, anyway, so there it is. And the redwood tree is still there, too, and it's huge. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway. Ah. I don't know if there are any other redwood trees in any of the backyards in whole of Berkeley, but there is one on Carrison Street, <laughs> which I planted. <laughs> Oh, and I saw the, uh, on the picture, I did see the uh, manzanita. Someone tells you, you can't. We went up north, and I brought back this teeny tiny little seedling of a manzanita because I love the bark. The bark is so beautiful on a manzanita besides the whole tree. And uh, I said, you can't grow manzanitas in the Bay Area. Well, I did. And it's still there, too, and it's big. I'm sure they have to cut it every once in a while. It would be huge by now. Well, anywho, there you go. <laughs> People tell me you can't do that. I'm going to watch me. I've not been always successful, but successful enough times with things I was told I couldn't do. All right, keep going. Dear me, we're having huh, talking about building, and I have all kinds of building stories myself. The curtain. He made a curtain of finely woven linen, dyed violet purple, red purple, and crimson, and embroidered with great winged creatures. Uh, which reminds me <clears throat> that not just here, but also in California, I would go out. Every curtain rod we had is a stick from out there, which then I whittled down, right? 
and they he have the little forked parts on the end where you can hang extra things on. <laughs> and those are my curtain rods. Yes, the only thing that I got was the little things to hook them into, right? Yes, yeah, saved a lot of money. Yeah, that's a big house, lots of curtains. I like curtains. Sometimes I take them all down and there's no curtains. Just depends on how I feel. But this reminds me of, yeah, made many curtains myself. Gosh, when I think of all the things that I made myself rather than bought at the store, I'm amazed over myself. All right, Daniel. <laughs> I can't help it. It's great, great memories. Oh, I like it. 36 brings out great memories for me. And for that with winged creatures, and for it he made four poles of acacia wood, overlaying them with gold, with golden hooks for them, for which he cast four sockets of silver. For the entrance to the tent, he made a screen of finely woven linen embroidered with violet, purple, red, purple, and crimson. As also the five columns for it and their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and rods with gold, but their five sockets were of bronze. Fancy stuff. So again, I think a lot of with the gold and the bronze and the silver and the special wood and the, the linen and all, I think it's not that God's greedy for all that. I think it's more, or gosh, you know, to be separate kind of, right? So show what? The rich status that God has, right? That's the only one and the Lord over everyone. This, I don't think it was that. It was to show the people, right? The, the uh, a distinction, right? Oh, of status, oh, of, of, of rank or this or that. I think it's more like, oh, what did I just say with all of it while I was reading it? How proud am I of what I have accomplished in many different areas? Right? Yes. I feel like I was trying to give the Israelites something. I said, look, you did this. I gave you the instructions. You did it. You should be proud of this and what you accomplished to please me. Right? Yes. Well, as I said, one can look at one thing one way or another. Right? Yes. But uh, it's interesting on how this is also detailed, written down, and on how while I'm reading this, certain things have come up from the past that I'm proud of, of what I accomplished. And, yeah, my kind of the, I don't know, did, did everything right from the beginning go well when they, when they did all this? Or, you know, with the cross, I'm going to... That doesn't look exactly right. I think we need to redo this one, right? Yes. Until then they had the perfect one. Going, oh, now th this is it. Now we're going to make, what, 50 more of this. Now 50 more of that. So many sheets more of, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was involved. The men, the women. I bet the children too, right? I have no doubt the children might have been there. Said, okay, daddy says, give me the hammer there. Huh? I can't say it without seeing the word. Yeah, might have had his a little son there, a couple of sons. Yeah. And they were uh, helping uh, hold something or hand a tool. Or, uh, they said, come here, come on. I'll show you how to do this. And maybe the girls were with the mamas, right? And I said, come here, sit on my lap. I'll show you how to weave this through. Yeah, let's do something together. So I could see that when the whole thing in, in the end came together, right? how much did people work together? And you know, who was all present there to do that? Yeah, just about the whole of Israel, right? Yes, sounds kind of like that to me. Like here. And we built, yeah, and in California, the first house that we bought and redid 
There were no crews coming to the house. We paid for we, we did everything ourselves. Everything was done ourselves with a lot of help from our friends and family. Here, the same thing. Exact same thing. All right. Well, we did hire some. We did have to hire some. The, the guy that dug out the basement and we needed some help with the chimney. So but that's about it. Yep. That's about it. Many people had their hands on this house and put work, blood, sweat, and tears into it, right? Yes. I think that's when homes really become a blessing. Yes. Well, anywho. There we go. That's what was that? I don't remember what that was. Interesting how this brought back memories. Mm -hmm. 36. Exodus 36. Building things. Some things you build once in your life. Some things you start building again in the spring. <laughs> I'm going to build up my garden again. Well, I'm already, I've already started. I always have to watch. When January comes around in February, I'm, I am ready to get out there and get started, right? And sometimes I jump the gun a little bit. Too early. So I have to hold back. Huh? But again, too, I could put the garlic out. I could put the onions out. The peas, the peas. Peas are a good time. Mustard greens is a good time. Kale's a good time. Right? There are certain things do really well, even in frost. And oh, snow. It's going to get cold here again. We might get a little snow. <laughs> Maybe not. It totally, all them storms that everybody else had everywhere, totally passed us by. <laughs> it got cold, which is good. But uh, we didn't have any bad weather. We got the rain that we needed again for our spring and our tank. Yes. That's what I wanted to share this morning. Exodus 36. God's love and blessings. And may he protect you. And I will talk to you another time.